التي حلت بفنائك عليك في السماوات على جميع أهل السماوات فلعل الله أمة رسسة أساس الظلم والجور عليكم أهل البيت ولعن الله أمة دفعتكم عن مقامكم وأزالتكم عن مراتبكم التي رتبكم الله فيها ولعن الله أمة قتلتكم ولعن الله الممهدين لهم بالتمكين من قتالكم بريت إلى الله وعليكم منهم وأشيائهم وأتباعهم وأوليائهم يا أبا عند الله إني سلم لمن سالبكم وحرب لمن حاربكم إلى يوم القيامة ولعن الله على زياد وعلى مروان ولعن الله بني أمية قاطبا ولعن الله أمن مرجانا ولعن الله أمر أمد سعد ولعن الله شمرا ولعن الله أمة أسرجات وألجمات وتنقبات لقتالك بأبي أنت وأمي لقد عظم مصابي بك فأنصر الله الذي أكرم مقامك وأكرمني أن يرزقني أن يرزقني طلب ثارك مع إمام منصور من أهل بيت محمد صلى الله عليه وآله اللهم اجعلني عندك وجيها بالحسين عليه السلام في الدنيا والآخرة يا أبا عند الله إني أتقرب إلى الله وإلى رسوله وإلى أمير المؤمنين وإلى فاطمة وإلى الحسن وإليك بمغالاتك وبالبراءة ممن أسس أساس ذلك وبنى عليه بنيانا وجرى في ظلمه وجوره عليكم وعلى أشيائكم برنت إلى الله وإليكم منهم وتقرب إلى الله ثم إليكم بموالاتكم وموالات وليكم وبالبراءة من أعدائكم والناصبين لكم الحرب وبالبراءة من أشيائهم وأتباعهم إني سلم لمن سالمكم وحرب لمن خاربكم وولي لمن وناكم وعدو فأسأل الله الذي أكرمني بمعرفتكم ومعرفة أوليائكم ورزقني البراءة من أعدائكم أن يجعلني معكم في الدنيا والآخرة وأن يثبت لي عندكم قدم صدق عند صدق في الدنيا والآخرة وأسأله 
أن يبلغ لي المقام المحمود لكم عند الله وأن يرزقني طلب ثاني مع إمام هدى زائر ناطق بالحق منكم وأسأل الله بحقكم وبشان الذي لكم عند أن يعطيني بمصابي بكم أفضل ما يعطي مصابا بمصيبة مصيبة ما عزمها وعزم رزيتها في الإسلام وفي جميع أهل السماوات والأرض اللهم اجعل لي في مقامي هذا ممن تنعله منك سلوات ورحمة ومغفرة اللهم اجعل محيا محمد محيا يا محيا محمد وعلى محمد ومماتي ممات محمد وعلى محمد اللهم إن هذا يوم تبركت به بنو مية وابن عاكلة الأكباد اللعين ابن اللعين على لسانك ولسان نبيك صلى الله عليه وآله في كل موطن وموقف وقف فيه نبيك صلى الله عليه وآله اللهم العن أبا سفيان ومعاوية ويزيد ابن معاوية عليهم منك اللعنة أبد العابدين وهذا يوم الفرحة به آل زياد وآل مروان بقتلهم الحسين صلوات الله عليه اللهم فضعف عليهم اللعن منك والعذاب الأليم اللهم إني أتقرب إليك في هذا اليوم وفي موقفي هذا وأيام حياتي بالبراءة منهم واللعنة عليهم وبالموالاة لنبيك يا وال نبيك عليه وعليهم السلام اللهم العال أول ظالم ظلم حق محمد وآل محمد وآخر تابعا له على ذلك اللهم العن العصابة التي جاهدت الحسين وشايات وبايات وتابعت على قتله اللهم العلهم جميعا السلام عليك يا عبد الله وعلى الارواح التي حلت بفنائك عليك مني سلام الله ابدا ما بقيت وبقي الليل والنهار ولا جعله الله آخر الأهد من لي لزيارتكم السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين اللهم خس أنت أول ظالم باللعن مني 
وبدابه أولا ثم الثاني والثالث والرابع اللهم العن يزيد خامسا والعن عبيد الله بن زياد وابن مرجانا وعمر بن سعد وشمرا وعلى ابي صفيان وعلى زياد وعلى مروان الى يوم القيامه سجود اللهم لك الحمد حمد الشاكرين لك على مصابهم الحمد لله على عظيم رديتي اللهم ارزقني الشفاعة الحسين يوم الورود وثبتني قدم عند قدم سنق عندك يا ام الحسين وأصحاب الحسين الذين بذلوا مهجهم دون الحسين عليه السلام صلوات اللهم صل على محمد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد Thank you brother Zaykh Amali Shan for the beautiful tilawat of the Holy Quran and the ziyarat Ashura Alhamdulillah we are blessed with Sayyid Hazar's presence for this Muharram and inshallah tonight say they'll be talking about Imam Hussain. It's one of the topics that I was looking forward to. Uh, we will have this topic divided into two parts now since we have one extra majlis. So Sayyid will be giving the talk on Imam Hussain al -Islam as part one tonight and part two tomorrow. So in your loudest of salawat, I would request Sayyid Zayqa Mali, uh, Sayyid Haider Hasnan to please come on the member and address the majlis for tonight. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي حسبنا الله ونعم الوكيل نعم المولى ونعم النصير الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله بجميع محامده كلها على جميع نعمه كلها 
والصلاة والسلام على عبده المرتضى ورسوله المجتبى وحبيبه المصطفى الذي سماه في السماوات أحمدا وفي الأرض أبا القاسم محمدا وعلى الأتيبين من أهله البررة سيما حجة الله الباقية صلى الله عليك يا ابن رسول الله صلى الله عليك يا أبا عبد الله يا رحمة الله الواسعة ويا باب نجاة الأمة ويا عبرة كل مؤمن ومؤمنة فيا ليتنا كنا معك سيدي فنفوز والله فوزا عظيما Dear brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It's related that Aba Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salam stated, Ana qatil al Abara. La yadkuruni mu'minun wala mu'minatun illa baka. I am the martyr of tears. No believing man. No believing woman, no individual whose heart contains Iman will remember me except that their eyes will shed tears. It's related that Al-Imam Al-Sadiq, the truthful one, alayhi salam, stated that the very breathing of the one who is filled with sadness because of the oppression done, done to us is counted as tasbih. The first tear that is sincerely shed for Abu Abdullah alayhi salam, and this is of course in the context we've discussed in previous nights. Even if it's to the extent of the wing of a fly is enough to put out all of the fire of hell. Because what is the fire of hell except our own reality, the evil that exists within us? One tear to that extent is enough to get rid of all of that dirt that's inside. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad, Ali Muhammad, wa'ajjil farajam. Tonight and tomorrow night, it, the most appropriate thing that can be discussed is that we try to increase our ma'rifah, our understanding of Aba Abdullah al Hussein Ruhi lahu al fida As one shaykh said, trying to understand the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi and his household alayhi wa salam, trying to understand them, trying to describe them, trying to speak about them, is like an ant trying to speak about a mountain. What would an ant know about a mountain? 
what can and aren't know about or not. These are the chosen ones. Yes. It's related that once Salman and Abu Dhar met one another and Abu Dhar said to Salman, let's go and find Amir al Mu'mineen. I have a question I want to ask him. They went together, they found Amir al Mu'mineen alayhi salam, and a certain question was asked, which we may discuss later on in the discussion. Amir al Mu'mineen alayhi salam, these are his close companions, these are the people of his ma'rifah, the people who are able to bear more of the secrets. With that in mind, he gives a very, very lengthy explanation regarding his reality, the reality of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa the reality of the Ahlul Bayt, alayhim That explanation, one of the things that is related, the Imam, alayhi salam, states, is that, is the following. Ana Muhammadun wa Muhammadun ana. I am Muhammad and Muhammad is me. In another part it's related, the Imam says, Awaluna Muhammad wa awsatuna Muhammad wa akhiruna Muhammad wa kulluna Muhammad. Salli ala Muhammad Ali. The first of us is Muhammad. The last of us is Muhammad. The middle of us is Muhammad and all of us are Muhammad. Now when we come to the Noble Quran, we find that sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he describes and speaks about the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, he describes him as what? As being like us, like other human beings. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Qul, innama ana basharun mithlukum. Say, O Messenger, tell the people, I am just a human being similar to you all. And we know that one of the criticisms that the people who disbelieved in his message had was exactly this. They would say, and this again is present in the Noble Quran, they would say, what? They would say, what is this man claiming to be a prophet? He eats like us. He drinks like us. He walks in the, walks in the markets like us. So what's so special about him? How can he be a messenger? So at times the Quran brings our attention to the fact that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a human being like you and me. However, isn't it interesting that the Quran, when, it's, when it tells the messenger to utter those words, it always uses the word bashar, not the word insan. Maybe one of the reasons is what we discussed in previous sessions. Al-insan means the human being. Al-bashar also means the human being. But the word al-insan comes from the word al-nisyan, forgetfulness. And in the Noble Quran, the Messenger of Allah is called what? Dhikr. His entire existence is remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So how can he, forgetfulness be attributed to him. So the Quran never does that. Whenever he's ordered to say, I'm a human being like you, the word used is always bashar, not insan. So in any case, we have verses of the Quran that bring our attention to the fact that he, with all of his greatness, is just like you and me. But then we have a different set of verses where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes him in a manner that a person feels, a person is just bewildered. What is this creation? How do we understand these two things together? Allow me to give some examples of some verses that mention that. For example, 
The Quran mentions, "A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim." Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Ya ayyuha al-ladin amanu, la tarfagu aswatakum fawq sawt al-nabi. ولا تجهروا له بالقول كجهر بعضكم لبعض أن تحبط أعمالكم وأنتم لا تشعرون. Oh, you who believe, do not raise your voices above the voice of the Prophet. And do not argue with him the way you argue with one another. What happens if you do that? All of your actions, all of your good deeds will come to nothing. And you won't even realize it. So clearly, clearly there is a difference between a regular human being and a messenger of Allah. Another example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the following, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الذين يبايعونك إنما يبايعون الله يد الله فوق أيديهم what is the scene being described? You know, in those days in Arabia, when you would express your lo loyalty to someone and say to someone that I am at your service whenever you need me, they would pledge allegiance. They would give al -bay'a, give allegiance. How would they do that? There was a symbolic gesture. That the one taking allegiance puts his hand out and the others giving allegiance put their hand under the hand of that individual or upon the hand of that individual. And this was a symbolic gesture of giving allegiance to that individual. The scene being described is exactly this. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has his hand stretched forward. And believers are coming to give bay'ah, allegiance to the Messenger of Allah. They're putting their hands, for example, under his hand. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says the following. Surely those who pledge allegiance to you, they are only pledging allegiance to Allah himself. Allah's hand is above their hands. Can you tell me this is a normal human being? It's exactly the same as you and me. What else do we have in the Quran? We have the ayah we discussed in previous sessions that states, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Ar-Rajeem. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قد أنزل الله إليكم ذكرا رسولا يتلو عليكم آيات الله Surely Allah has sent down, caused to descend towards you a remembrance, ذكر What is that remembrance? A messenger who recites upon you, recites for you the verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is called dhikr. He is called divine remembrance. The same Quran that says, O Messenger, say to the people, I am just a human being similar to you. How do we put these two concepts together? The idea that the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, is like us, yet at the same time, he's not like us. And these are only a few verses that we are discussing. There are many verses we can bring. The Quran says, whoever obeys the messenger, he has obeyed Allah. Do you have this about anyone else? How do we bring these two concepts together? That on one hand, the messenger of Allah is similar to us. On the other hand, we cannot fathom his reality. How some of our scholars have explained it is in the following manner that, you know, existence has layers. Existence has levels. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألا له الخلق والأمر Surely to Allah belongs الخلق and الأمر علامة طباء طباء رحمة الله عليه has an incredible explanation about this. So I'm paraphrasing what Allama says. He says that al-khalq is the physical side of creation. Al-amr are the spiritual realms of creation. And the Quran is saying both belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
both al-khalq, the physical side, the dunya, this physical world in which we reside, and al-amr, the heavens, the spiritual side to creation, which is much greater than this very small part of existence that is the dunya, all of it belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now the human being is a being who is present in both the physical realm as well as the spiritual realms. The human being is a being who has been given a presence in all the realms that exist. In each realm, the human being is present with a presence that is suited to that realm. What is the presence suited to this realm, the physical realm? Your physicality, your body. But in the higher realms, you are present there as well. With, a high, with higher aspects of your being. Now the same goes with the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He has what they call an earthly station, meaning his physicality and with which he was present in this earth. But he also has a station of light. Maqamun Noor, which is his spiritual reality. The perfect human being is the one who does justice to both realms simultaneously. And some great scholars, mystics, have said that the only human being, even out of all the prophets, all of the martyrs, all of the righteous from the beginning of creation, the only human being who could do absolute justice to both realms without going too much this way or too much that way, the only one who could perfect that state of balance was Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. So sometimes the Quran brings our attention to the earthly station of the Messenger of Allah where he sleeps, like Everyone else sleeps. He eats, he drinks, he marries, he has children, he walks in the marketplaces. But sometimes the Quran, many times, the Quran brings our attention to his station of light. We have in our narrations that when Lady Fatima al Zahra السلام, was carrying al Hussein alayhi salam within her stomach. She had not yet given birth to him. Jibra'een alayhi salam descended and informed the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about what will happen to al Hussein alayhi salam on the day of Ashura. When the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa informed Lady Fatima al-Zahra alayha salam it's related she uttered a statement similar to this that you know what something like this I don't remember exactly but what that I didn't have this child or you know it is a child that's not blessed how this is explained is that this is Due to the earthly station, as a mother, no mother would want to give birth to a child which she knows is going to be slaughtered in that manner. She has that station also. This is how we explain that sometimes the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa and his household utter things that seem very, very normal. And at the same time, they utter things which leave you bewildered because of the difference of these stations, the earthly station and the heavenly station, the station of light. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Now, no one can know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah cannot be known by anyone. Because other than Allah, is at the end of the day limited. Even the best of creation, the crown of existence, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, with all his greatness, at the end of the day, he's a creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
And no matter how great a creation of Allah may become, whenever you compare the limited to unlimited, the limited becomes a zero. This has to be understood. So Allah cannot be understood by any of his creation. Yet we have been called to do what? To gain ma'rifah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To understand him. So is this an impossible mission? Or is the meaning of this ma'rifah, understanding Allah, something else? It's related that in that tradition mentioned in Bihar al-Anwar, which we spoke about earlier, in which Abu Dhar and Salman go to Amir al-Mu'mineen, one of the things that Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam mentions is the following. That your ma'rifah, your deep knowledge and understanding of my station of light, that reality is understanding Allah. That is what ma'rifatullah means. And ma'rifatullah, understanding Allah means to understand me in that station of light. But this is not possible except for, and he names some groups of people, one of them is a believer whose heart has been tested for iman. This is something that requires serious self-purification. Which is why he, re he reveals these secrets to who? To Abu Dhar and Salman, not to all of his companions. To Abu Dhar and Salman. Because they had the capacity to receive this knowledge. So what it means to recognize Allah is actually what? What is the extent of recognition that a human being can achieve? It is to recognize the representative of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The imam of the time. And we have that famous tradition that all Muslims have reported from the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, which states what? Man mata wa la ya'rifu imam zamanihi mata mitatan jahiliya. One who dies without gaining deep knowledge, recognition, understanding, ma'rifa of the imam of his time has died a death of ignorance. al jahiliya ignorance, was the name and is the name given to that period in which the Arabs lived before the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi appeared and enlightened them with Islam. So it's as if Islam never came to this person. Even if that person was someone who did the rituals, does that mean such a person won't go to heaven? No, they might go to heaven. But we spoke about this, heaven has levels. Heaven has levels. The distance between two levels of paradise is the distance between the earth and the sky. So, we have this station of light and this earthly station. To understand Allah means to understand his representative upon this earth in that station of light. This is what is termed ma'rifatullah, knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Now when we come to the Noble Qur'an, we find what? We find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala introduces himself as a Rabbul Alameen. We recite this in Surah Al-Fatiha in every one of our prayers. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. All praise and thanks is due to Allah who is the Rabb. Rabb doesn't have a translation, requires an explanation, but we just say Lord for the sake of making it easy because it's not our discussion tonight the lord the master of existence alameen all existence allah calls himself rabbul alameen he uses the word alameen to describe all of existence i am the master of all existence and when it comes to the messenger of allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, allah says what wa ma arsalnaka illa rahmatan lil alameen O oh, Messenger, 
we didn't send you except as a mercy to wear to all existence. Meaning wherever Allah is master, Rabb, his messenger is Rahmah, mercy. What's going on here? Who is he? What is this reality? Mercy, Rahmah, is something that every human being desires, needs. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the first thing he tells us in the Quran about himself, I've come to the Quran, I've opened the Quran to be introduced to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh Allah, who are you? How do you want me to view you? The first thing he tells us is what? I am merciful and I am merciful. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. The first thing Allah mentions in speaking to insan, the human being, is what? Know this, I am extremely merciful, I am extremely merciful. Not I am the most powerful one, though he is. Not I am absolute in my wisdom, though he is. You need to know one thing, that I am so merciful. Why? Because you, oh insan, rahmah is very important to you. I've created you that way. Ar-Rahman, the one who is extreme in his mercy, immense in his mercy. Rahman, they say, refers to the mercy of Allah that surrounds everything. Everything that exists is an act of mercy. Allah says in the Quran, وَرَحْمَتِي وَسِعَتْ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ My mercy surrounds, encompasses everything. Everything that exists is an act of mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But I'm also a rahim Ar-Rahim and Ar-Rahman, both from the word, come from the word Ar-Rahmah, mercy. Ar-Rahim, they say, refers to the mercy of Allah that is reserved for those who actually make effort. Everyone is initially given that mercy. Our existence is by means of Allah's mercy. This mercy is not being cut off even for a moment because existence, brothers and sisters, is an ongoing process. It's not the case that Allah is like the watchmaker who created a watch and left it. The watchmaker is gone, he is long dead, but the watch is functioning. This is sometimes how we think of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We needed him just to begin existing. The world needed him to begin existing. No, 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 no. That's not what creation means. Creation is an ongoing process. One of the best examples given for us to get a glimpse of the relation of creation to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the following example. Imagine a house in your mind right now, dear brothers and sisters. A house in your mind. Just imagine, create the house in your mind. Think of it. Now think of a flower. What happened when you thought of that flower? You forgot about the house, right? How long did that house exist for? Till the moment you were paying attention to it. How dependent would you say that house in your mind, that image is upon you and your attention towards it? 100% dependent. It's not the dependence of a child on his parents. The child requires his parents to come into being. But if God forbid something happens to the parents, the child is still alive. You can't compare that neediness to the neediness of that house in your mind towards your attention. They say this is perhaps the best example we have to understand the relation of Allah with his creation. Just like that house in your mind only exists so long as you intend it to, creation only exists so long as Allah intends it to. Every moment he is giving you existence by means of what? His mercy. His rahmah. Every moment, moment to moment. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said what? وَرَحْمَتِي وَسِعَتْ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ My mercy encompasses all things. Question. Is time a thing or not? Shay, a thing, an existent. Is time a creation? Is time an existent? So his mercy encompasses even time itself. 
What is the reality of that mercy? Allah has told us, I did not send you except as a mercy to existence. It's related that once one of the companions of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi who had salawat the capacity to understand more than others Jabir came to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi and said Ya Rasul Allah, O Messenger of Allah what is the first thing that Allah created? It's related the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi replied by saying, Nuru Nabiyyiku Ya Jabir. The first thing that Allah created was the light of your Prophet, O Jabir. That station of light we spoke about. And we have to remember when we say the first, it's not first in terms of time. He didn't say the first thing Allah created was time, no. I was the first thing that Allah created. My reality. Time came after that. So this mercy, this rahmah, that reality surrounds and encompasses everything, even space and time. We're just trying to get some glimpses, like an ant trying to understand that mountain. Let's understand that these beings cannot be fathomed. Before Allah, they come to zero, but before them, all other creation comes to zero. They cannot be fathomed. In that same narration of Amir al Mu'mineen, it's related, he says to those two noble companions, don't call us the Hilbayt. Don't call us as a Lord, as a God, as a deity. Apart from that, say whatever you want about us. Because whatever you say is less. You can't fathom our reality. Brothers and sisters, this world, the dunya, doesn't have the capacity to show reality exactly as it is. We mentioned that it's alam ul kathra, the realm of plurality. I don't know how many of the brothers and sisters have had the tawfiq to visit some of the shrines of the Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam In Mashhad, the shrine of Imam al radha alayhi salam In Karbala, the shrine of Aba Abdullah alayhi salam In Qadhmi, the shrine of Imam al Qadhm and Imam al Jawad alayhim salam When you enter these shrines, you find that a lot of these shrines, they have what? They've beautified the walls by using fragmented mirrors. You have hallways, you have walls that are filled with small fragments of mirrors, you know, but they're like broken to fragments and put together very beautifully, almost like a mosaic. Now when you look in that mirror, you see your reflection, you see the other walls, the other people, but not exactly as the reality is, right? Because a mirror is fragmented, it's small, it can't show the reality exactly as it is. But you see something. Us trying to see reality in this dunya is like that. We see something, but it's not exactly the right, the actual absolute reality. Because this dunya lacks the capacity to show that reality as it is. Another example. A ra imagine a rainbow. We've all seen a rainbow. It's beautiful, right? But is it really there? A rainbow is nothing but an optical illusion. That's why if you try and chase and find the end of the rainbow to find the pot of gold they say is at the end of the rainbow, you'll never find it. Why? Because the rainbow is not real. You see seven different colors, but in reality what is there is only light, right? It's just light, it's just one light. But you see it, it manifests itself in seven different colors, or eight different colors, or how many colors, ever color, however number of colors the rainbow may have. But it's not really there. What's there is just a single light. You see it in this manner. Brothers and sisters, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
sent his mercy, sent his light into this realm, the physical realm, this dunya, this world was incapable of showing it exactly as it is. It fragmented into different colors. One of them became the Quran. Another one became Rasulullah. Another one became Amir al Mu'mineen. Another one became Fatima al Zahra. Another one became Al Hassan. And another one became Al Hussein Aba Abdullah. Ruhi lahu al Fida. And similarly, the nine uh, immah from the progeny of Al Hussein alayhi salam. One light manifested in different forms. And the spiritual teachers, some of them have mentioned that in the higher realms, there is a unity between the Quran and the Ahl al Bayt. It's not the case that they're separate. This dunya couldn't show you that reality as it is, because it's the world of multiplicity, alam al kathra. Now we have this. Allah's mercy is surrounding all things. Everything that exists is by means of Allah's mercy. That mercy is nothing but the reality of Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. So, when this same messenger states the following, Ali yun minni. Ali is part of me. Fatima to badhatun minni. Fatima is part of me. Hassanun minni. Al Hassan is part of me. And when he states, Husseinun minni wa ana min Hussein, what does that mean? Hussein is from me, and I am from Hussein. We know this narration. We come and we say what? Sometimes we come to the words of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, and instead of us coming with humility and saying, you know what, maybe I haven't understood. Maybe I don't have the capacity to understand the depths of his words. We don't entertain the possibility that maybe I lack understanding. We bring the words down, water them down, misinterpret them to make it feel, fit into our very limited perception of reality. So we come and we say, what? Hussein on minni. Hussein is from me. So the Messenger of Allah is saying that because Hussein is his grandson. Physically, he is from Fatima, who is the daughter of Rasulullah. Okay, what about the second part? I am from Hussein. How are you going to justify this with that tiny perception of reality you have? So no, no, no. What Rasulullah meant to say was that one day Al Hussein will save his religion. Ajib. Rasulullah, you know better than Rasulullah. There weren't enough words in this incredible, vast language, which is the Arabic language, to mention that. If Rasulullah had meant to say that, he would have said it. Even though it's true, Al Hussein alayhi salam slave saved the religion of Rasulullah. But that's not what the hadith says. The hadith says, I am from Al Hussein. This is a reference, possibly, dear brothers and sisters, to that heavenly reality. That mercy manifested itself, that rahmah manifested itself in different forms. But in reality, it is the same rahmah. And we find, we find what? We find that on the day of Ashura, after that Mal'oon did what he did, Lady Zainab al Hawra, Aqila to Bani Hashim, what did she say? Look, these words are so deep. You know, we need lectures and books written about these words because they are founded upon a worldview that is completely in line with the Quran. She said, Al Yoma Mata Jaddi Rasulullah. Today, 
is not the day that Al Hussein was killed. Today is the day my grandfather, the Messenger of Allah, was killed. Don't think you killed a member of the household of Rasulullah. You killed the very Messenger of Allah today. You killed the very Quran today. Yes, this is an ant trying to understand a mountain. And this is exactly why, because of this unity in the higher realms, when you remember Al Hussein alayhi salam, your soul begins to fly. You begin to feel pure. You begin to feel connected. The day and the eve of Tasu'a is upon us. These are evenings, moments in which the doors of the heavens are open, yes? But these are moments that burn the hearts of the believers. If you find in these days, in these evenings, these nights, not only when you're in the mosque, not only when you're with the others who are mourning, you find between yourself and Allah, there is a pain in your heart then know that that is because of the iman, the faith that exists within your heart. Because it's related that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa has stated that surely there is a heat in the hearts of the believers for the martyrdom of al Hussein, which shall never cool down. Sallallahu alayk Ya Aba Abdullah Sallallahu alayk Ya Sallallahu alayk Ya Aba Abdullah One of the hardest moments for Abu Abdullah on the day of Ashura was a moment in which the Maqtal says, فَبَكَ الْحُسَيْنِ بُكَانْ شَدِيدًا Al Hussein was weeping, a weeping that was very severe. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah. It's related that Ayatullah Qadi Rahmatullahi Alayhi. That great teacher of the spiritual path when speaking about the station of light of the standard bearer of Abu Abdullah stated that Abu Fadl al Abbas is the Kaaba of the friends of Allah. He is the Kaaba of Awliya Allah. It's related that Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam stated 
that surely our uncle Abbas enjoys a station in the heavens that all of the shuhada, the martyrs, they envy his station. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah. On the ninth day of Muharram, in the land of Karbala, the standard bearer of Aba Abdullah was inside the tents. Aba Abdullah was close to him. A voice came. It was the voice of Shimr ibn Dil Joshan. He had come near the tents. What was he saying? Where are my relatives, Abbas and his brothers? But Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas didn't even answer him because his loyalty is to another. Yes, the bonds of Iman are greater than the bonds based on blood. Abu Abdullah said to him, even though he's a fasiq, a sinful man, answer him. Even in that moment, he didn't say to Abu Abdullah, no. He didn't say, I don't want to answer him. He answered him, what do you want? That Mal'oon said, O oh, Abbas, you are my relative, your brothers are related to me. Me. I've brought a letter of safety for you and your brothers. Come to our side. Don't be killed alongside your brother Hussein. Abu al Abbas replies, Cursed are you and cursed is this letter of safety you bring. You invite us to safety while Hussain, the son of Fatima to Zahra, doesn't have safety. La ilaha illallah. That Malhun became angry and returned to the army. There comes a moment in the day of Ashura. From the morning, one companion is going after another. Abu Abdullah stops them at the time of Salah. He prays Salatul Khawf. Some of his Ashab, his companions, stand before the Imam. What is their job? The arrows that are being fired towards Abu Abdullah. They would make their chest, their arms, their faces, the shield were above the law so that he could finish his salah. Some of his companions were shaheed in this manner. After the prayer, the companions keep going one after another to the battlefield until there comes a time that no one is left except the household of Abu Abdullah. One may ask, why didn't Abu Abdullah send his household before his companions? The answer is simple. The companions didn't allow that to happen. How can the children of Al Hussein go to the battlefield while blood still flows through my veins? Never, never. I've never seen companions like you. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah. There comes a moment on the day of Ashura. It's afternoon now. The companions have all been martyred. The only ones remaining is the household of Abba Abdullah. The first one who comes forward seeking permission is the son of Abba Abdullah, Ali Akbar. 
Bible when some of the other companions would come seeking permission Abu Abdullah would reply along the following lines you don't have to trouble yourself because of us you don't have to do this but when the son of Abu Abdullah came he said go Go to the battlefield, Allah, Allah. One of the members of the household of Abdullah goes to the battlefield one after another. Ali al Akbar goes, Qasim goes, one after another they go, they go. Until there comes a moment when Abu Abdullah is left very alone. There is no one left, he calls out, Hal min nasirin yansuruna. Is there any helper to help us? Is there any defender to defend the sanctuary of Rasulullah, the sanctity of Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi la ilaha illallah. Sayyid ibn Tawus says in his Maqtal Nuhuf that Abu Abdullah and Abu Fadl al-Abbas began fighting together. They set out together towards the enemy. Abu Fadl al-Abbas set out towards the direction of the river. For three days before the day of Ashura, the enemies had blocked water from reaching the tents of Abu Abdullah. While the wild beasts of the deserts drank from the river, the children of Abu Abdullah cried, Al Atash, Al Atash, the thirst, the thirst. La ilaha illallah. These two brothers set out together towards the enemy, but the enemy comes between them. Abu Abdullah can no longer see his brother. Abu Fadl al Abbas, since related, he makes his way towards the river. This is the son of Haydar. No one can come close to him. He goes towards the river in the hope that he can quench the thirst of his master Hussain. La ilaha illallah. He was himself very thirsty. He was also suffering from the heat, from the thirst. He'd been fighting. It's very difficult. You've seen myself giving these lectures. How many times during this lecture do I drink water because my throat dries? La ilaha illallah. La yawmaka yawmaka ya Abdullah. Abu Fadl al Abbas makes his way to the river. He gets down from his horse. Some say the first thing he did, he brought his horse to the river. He said, Drink. <laughs> La ilaha illallah. What does he do? It said he placed his hands in the cool water of Rat. Imagine the cool water running over his blessed eyes. He brought the water close to his lips. But one of those who was watching said, I saw an incredible sight. I saw Abu Fadl al Abbas bring his hands up to his limbs to drink the water. But then I saw him throw the water back into the river. What happened in that moment? The Maktan says, For the Karaatash al Hussain. He remembered the thirst of his master Hussain. Some have said he addressed himself in the following manner O oh, self, do you think of drinking the cool water while Al Hussein is drinking the cup of death? Never by Allah, this is not what my religion teaches me. He fills the water skin with water and mounts his horse. Maybe the water skin is in one hand, his sword in the other, but between the river and the tents of Abu Abdullah are many, many enemy soldiers. They were, they were too afraid to face him one to one. What did they do? 
They began showering arrows upon him for the love of us. He kept going. He has to quench the thirst of Abdullah. He has to let water reach the children of Abdullah. La ilaha illallah. He was on his horse battling through the enemies until that Malhoun came. He brought down his sword. He severed the right hand of Abdullah. In the Maktan it's mentioned, imagine his right hand has just been severed. What level of Iman is this? What level of love is this? It's mentioned he uttered, Wallahi in qata'atum o yameeni, inni yuhami abadan an deeni, wa an al-imam al-sadiq al-yaqeeni, sibt al-nabi al-tahir al-lameeni, by Allah if my right hand you sever, I shall protect my religion forever, and loyally defend the truthful leader, the grand Son of Allah's final messenger, he kept making his way towards the tents until another Malhoun came. They surrounded him from every direction. That Malhoun came forward, he severed the left hand of Abu Fadl al Another one came, he struck the head of Abu Fadl al he was about to fall upon the sands of Karbala. Ya sahib al-zaman What is the most natural reaction of someone who is about to fall from a high place upon the sands, upon the earth? What do you do in that moment? You put out your hands to break your fall. But Abul Fadl al-Habbas didn't have any hands to break his fall. How did he fall? Allah knows better. Did he fall on his back? Did he fall on his face? Did the water start flowing before his eyes upon the sun? Look at I don't know whether when Abu Abdullah reached the side of his brother, had the soul of Abu Fadl al-Abbas departed, or was it still present? But I do wonder if his soul was still present, and he felt the presence of Abu Abdullah approaching him. What did he think to himself? Maybe he thought to himself, Ya Abu Abdullah, would that you don't come? Why? Because I don't have a hands to stand out to respect for you, O oh, son of Fatima. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah. It was in that moment the Maktul says, when Abu Abdullah reached the side of his standing bearer, for back al Hussein buka and shadida, al Hussein began weeping profusely. Wa qala la ala in kusr al dahri. Wallah, the only place in the Maktul is related. Abu Abdullah said, my back is broken, was in that moment, Allah, oh Allah, my back is broken now, who is uttering these words, the light of Allah, the face of Allah. Rahmatullah al wasi'a Sayyid al-Shuhada La ilaha illallah But I wonder if in those final moments When Abu Abdullah came beside a standard bearer If Abu Fadl al-Abbas and soul had not departed What would he have wanted in those final moments? Could it have been other than to be embraced by Abu Abdullah? Abu Abdullah would do that to his companions when they fall. He'd embrace them. He'd wipe the dust from their face. What's then about Abu Abdullah? Allah knows better the secret moments between these two brothers. But I wonder what Abu Abdullah Abbas would have felt in those final moments if he saw Abu Abdullah come upon him. Allah knows better. Allah knows better. I feel embarrassed. 
to face you Oh brother Yaha I feel in to face you Yaha Hussein why I have no arms to embrace you I feel in To embrace you If you I have No grief I have Abu Fadl If you I have If you I have No grief I have Abu Fadl If you I have A broken back How can I have Abu Fadl, if you are a broken back, how can I have Abu Fadl, if you I have Ryan of my father Abbas, the hope of my daughter Abbas, shield of my sister Abbas. Oh, my standard bearer, Abbas. Oh, my standard bearer, Abbas. Abu Fadl, return to me. Just one last time, look towards me. Abu Fadl, return to me. Just one last time, look towards me. I'm surrounded by enemies. Abu Fadl, return to me. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa Brothers, a lament for Abu Fadl. Call out to Abu Abdullah. Join us with Matam, insha'Allah. Abu Abdullah. Abu Abdullah. Abu Abdullah. Abu Abdullah. Let your voices reach Karbala, insha'Allah. Abu Abdullah. No, brothers, I want every one of you. It's just Abba Abdullah. What words are these? The, it is the word of your Imam, the name of your Imam. Everyone should recite it. I will not start the matter without hearing everyone recite Abba Abdullah. I want all of you to recite with me. Abba Abdullah. Abba Mashallah, Mashallah, Abandillah. Louder, louder with your voices, Abandillah, 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 Abandillah.
Follow my hand, inshallah. Alhamdulillah, you have passion, you have speed, but follow the beat, inshallah. There is no day like your day. There is no day like yours, Hussein. There is no day like yours. There is no day like yours, Hussein. With lips drier than signs of deserts. When lips drier than signs of deserts, the necks of your lions were slaughtered. When lips drier than signs of deserts, the necks of your lions were slaughtered. The shining moons of Banu Hashim were carried on space for their master. An arrow struck the eye of Haydar. 
protect Hussein and Zainab and our struck the eye of Haydar who would protect Hussein and Zainab the head and arms you once would embrace was struck when I and none was severed the head and arms you once would embrace was struck when I and none was severed the pillars of heaven still tremble from the thirsty cries of the children the pillars of heaven still tremble from the thirsty cries of the children the shores of the reverse the laments begging a boss to take the water the shores of the reverse the laments begging a boss to take the water your blood Across the lands are scattered, but the flag of Hussein still flutters. Your blood across the lands are scattered, but the flag of Hussein still flutters. In Sham you hear from the prison, in Sham you hear from the prison. My Abu Father has been martyred, my Abu Father has been martyred. 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 My condolences on Malbani for they have martyred your children, your children, your children. My condolences on Malbani for they have martyred your children. Your children, your children, your children. O oh, Bashir for the son of Zara, my every son can be martyred, be martyred, be martyred. There is no day like your day. There is no day like yours, Hussein. There is no day like your day. There is no day like yours, Hussein. There is no day like your day. Hussein. There is no day like your day. There is no day like. O Bashir Karbala, what of the son of Zara? When the caravan of Abandullah finally arrived in Medina, after the tragedy of Ashura, when Zainab came back with Imam and St. John, a poet known as Bashir narrated about the tragedy. Umm al comes out and says, Tell me of Hussein. What does Bashir say? He begins to narrate the tragedy of the Shuhada. She says, No, Bashir, tell me of Hussein. He begins to tell her about her sons and about Abba. She cries out, but tell me of the son of Zahra. Let us hear what Bashir says to Umm al -Banin. Hussein has stood with his followers. Hussein, Hussein has stood with his followers until he carried them from battle. Hussein had stood with his followers until he carried them from battle. The sun, the moon, the stars had shaken as he cried for Qasim and Akbar. As he cried for Qasim and Akbar. Only the skies can be a witness. How did Hussein bury his Asghar? The river wept oceans when hearing a boss, my back has now been broken. A boss, my back has now been broken. 
But his dry lips had never complained He always thanked his Lord with prayer But his dry lips had never complained He always thanked his Lord with prayer Until he saw standing on the hill Return back to the tent, so Zainab Return back to the tent, so Zainab The doors of heaven have been trampled As the rib of Hussein were broken The doors of heaven have been trampled As the ribs of Hussein were broken Without an ounce or drop of water the sword of Gother has been mortared. The sword of Gother has been mortared. O oh, people, the son of the prophet betrayed, abandoned, was slaughtered. Was slaughtered. Was slaughtered. O oh, people, the son of the prophet betrayed, abandoned. Was slaughtered, was slaughtered, was slaughtered. Oh, Bashi, don't call me Omar Banin, for I no longer have children, have children, have children. Oh, Bashi, don't call Omar Banin, for I no longer have children. Have children, have children. There is no day like your day. There is no day like yours, Hussein. There is no day like your day. Like yours, Hussein. Yo, Hussein, yo, 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 Hussein. Yo, Hussein, yo. My life is for you, oh Hussein. My life is for you, oh Hussein. My life is for you, oh. Hussein, for us you gave your life away. Let all the world call me insane. Let all the world call me insane. There is no love without Hussein. There is no love without Hussein. My life is for you, oh Hussein. For us you gave your life away. Let all the world call me insane. There is no love without Hussein. There is no love without Hussein. Oh, Hussein, 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 Call out to Karbala, Hussein, Mashallah, Hussein, 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 when you are all alone, Hussein, I wish I was there. When you are all alone, Hussein, I wish I was there. As you rested against your spear, leaning in despair. Let me become happy for you, fighting till the end. Let me become happy for you, fighting till the end. 
just like you're John within your arms. Let my soul ascend, just like you're John within your arms. Let my soul ascend. Take me away to Karbala. Take me away to Karbala, towards the heaven of Zahra. Take me away to Karbala. Take me away to Karbala. Towards the heaven of Zahra. All the angels after I die. Only heaven is Karbala. All the angels after I die. Only heaven is Karbala. Ya Hussein, Ya Hussein. 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 Salamu alayka. محمد والي محمد